it actually, uh, the, and I'm going to say uh, both these schools helped us on, on that project, uh, and the Fish, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service helped us on it. We, our commission gave us $400,000 to, to do an eradication attempt. And so then we had, uh, that doesn't count our employee time or any of our other uh, partners' time, Probably the whole project was worth a million dollars with, uh, I mean, the Fish and Wildlife Service provided us with a, 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 a helicopter for spraying the, the fish toxicant, wrote known. Uh, you ask about the monitoring. Um, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe everybody knows that since then uh, we've found more. I mean, it was, a, it was something we felt we had to do. It's a responsible thing because of where they were located. And Arkansas has already got brands on some fish out there, but we we uh, we thought it was worth the effort to to try to contain them when they were in that one drainage where they where they started out. Monitoring, we have uh, UCA University of Central Arkansas under contract, and they are they're out there. Uh, uh, there's a graduate student on it, and a lot of undergraduates and other people helping him. But they're, they're doing uh, research on two things. One, uh, reoccurrence of snakeheads and also the reestablishment of the native populations after we kill that drainage. It's a 50,000 acre drainage uh, over there near Brinkley. And, uh, and we are actually, uh, you know, anglers are out there and they, and they caught one last week or the week before last. And so we went over our policy right now is to kind of search and destroy when we find them we take our, our fish toxicant go out and kill an area around them you know if it's in a irrigation ditch we may kill two or three miles of that ditch and that system there this last ones that were found were over outside the drainage that we killed uh, you know 40 miles from the white river and which is close to the mississippi river which opens up to 28 or 29 states i can't remember mississippi drainage so, uh, but we went over with the uh, Marsh Masters, which are basically, uh, it's a pontoon boat with tracks on it so that it can float or it can go in marshy territory, really neat. You're driving like a bulldozer. And, uh, and we, we eradicated about three acres of, of an area where they were. We got five more out of it. Four of them were females. Did I say this already? Maybe to you earlier. Four were females and one was a male. They, the females had eggs in them. This is the time of year they start spawning. So uh, we had one area, the area where they were found was the Bonner Farm. And, and, and the, that farmer uh, found one out in the road on one of his farm roads, knew it wasn't anything he'd ever seen, called us and tried to convince us it was something different. We kept saying it's a bowfin, which is a native fish that looks a lot like it. Finally. He, can, he showed it to one of our biologists who uh, identified it. We killed that whole, pond, that whole farm, all his drainage network that wasn't connected to any other natural waters with rotenone. Then during our eradication effort, we did it again. We killed all those uh, 15 or 20 miles of ditches in his area. Then as a monitoring thing, because we knew they liked that area, we went back in Well, we killed five more. So, I mean, we had already killed that three times with our, you know, with our fish toxicant. So they're, they're just, a, I mean, they're, you have to be impressed by them. They're actually an amazing fish, but we've got them. And, and what we're going to continue to do is that rapid response thing. When somebody finds one, we'll go to try to take care of that localized population. Would you explain a little bit more about what they are and where they came from? They came from Asia mainly. They're a... They're, they're used in the, uh, the, they're popular in the Asian live fish food market. They're, uh, they're very valuable. We don't know for sure how we got these here. We do know that a fish farmer over there, that one of his business associates uh, in the, apparently uh, about 12 inch bass are very popular in the live fish market in the Northeast and Northwest and uh, bigger cities. and. Uh, but these snake hens were a lot more valuable. So one of his uh, business associates brought him about 2,000 of them, and he had them on a pond, a uh, farm pond, or a uh, uh, fish farm pond over by Brinkley. And uh, 
you know, the, uh, other people, including UAPB, told them that they were about to be listed as, a, you know, uh, outlawed in this country, uh, which happened in 2002. I think it was about 2000 that he had those fish. And people convinced him that they could crawl across and get into his other ponds and eat up everything. So he tried to get rid of them. And what we heard was they sained them all up and threw them up on the bank. And uh, I don't know if that's true, but and I mean, we can't say, but that's a mile and a half from where the first one was found in the wild that we, so it's, you know, it probably is likely that that's where they came from. And he did try to get rid of them and, and uh, they're, you know, they're illegal all over the country now, and, but they've been found in other places. They're established in the Potomac River, and in fact, there's guides that charge $350 a day to take people fishing for them. Uh, the biggest one we got was eight pounds, and, and they are supposed to be really good to eat. I can't, we killed hundreds of them. No, they're a predator. They uh, eat their, uh, they eat other fish, they eat crayfish, they eat everything we've got. They can, they're an obligate air breather. They live, they don't have to have oxygen in the water. They have to get up and breathe air every now and then. They spawn up to five times a year. They're, they're, the parents uh, both uh, protect their offspring. So that's un, unusual. In Arkansas, either they don't protect their uh, babies at all or only one parent, and usually the male protects the nest. So. You know, we've got them, so, uh, you know, we're going to have to, we, we don't know what their end result is going to be. Um, silver carp, which are the ones that jump that you see in the videos all the time, they've been out in the wild for 30, 40 years probably, and they just didn't really reach that peak where they were a problem until in the last four or five years. So we don't know what's going to happen down the road. And uh, there are some, and, and Carol could probably talk more about it, but there's some genetic ways that people are, working on, like Australia, on common carp, and ways that over a long period of time you can eradicate a species, a uh, specific species. And that's probably going to be the only hope for things like this. And you may want to talk about that, but we've got them. We tried, and I think we made a good effort. We were very experienced with rotenone, which is the chemical. We had, I have to say that, and, and and I don't know if Carol, you came over or, or John while we were doing it. I think you did, but they, uh, you could go walk down the farm roads and where there was some water, you'd see rotenone in there. You know, I think our crews made every effort. And the good thing was that right off the bat, we started seeing them. So we were motivated to go in and, and try to take care of them. And, uh, but it's just, they've got, they, they had better survivability than, than what we had to throw at them. <laughs> 